Hello everyone! Today we are starting a new read aloud book. It's called Georgia's Marvelous Medicine and it's by Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl was one of my favorite authors when I was younger. He wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and just like that movie a book and movie has some very silly interesting twists to it so does this book as well. This is definitely a book that's very full of fiction and nothing I would like you to try at home but hopefully it livens our spirits a little bit. Chapter one, Grandma. And with a title like that, we know that she is gonna be an important character in the book. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said to George on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get into mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a small boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he could get into. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, said the mother. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked little eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, said George. And just try to behave yourself for once while she's away. Yes, Grandma, said George. George was bored to tears. Hmm. He didn't have a brother or, si or a sister. His father was a farmer, and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere, so they were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house of that grisly old grunion of a grandma. Ooh, that's some nice alliteration there. Grisly old grunion of a grandma. All those j, g, g, g. Looking after her. All by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. You can make me a nice cup of tea for a start, Grandma said to George. That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma, George said. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small puckered mouth like a, like a dog's bottom. Ooh. Kind of a gross description, but that comparison, that simile right there, really helps you picture what her mouth looks like. How much sugar in your tea today, Grandma? George asked her. One spoonful, she said, and no milk. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window, and she was always complaining, grousing, grouching, grumbling, griping about something or other. Ooh, more alliteration. Never once, even on her best days, had she smiled at George and said, well, how are you this morning, George? Or, why don't you and I have a game of snakes and ladders? Or, how was school today? She didn't seem to care about other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. George went into the kitchen and made Grandma a cup of tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup into the living room. Grandma sipped the tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in it. George took the cup back to the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it again and carried it carefully to Grandma. Where's the saucer, she said. I won't have a cup without a saucer. George fetched, fetched her a saucer. And what about a teaspoon, if you please? I've stirred it for you, Grandma. I stirred it well. I'll stir my own tea, thank you very much, she said. Fetch me a teaspoon. 
George fetched her a teaspoon. Here is a picture of Grandma and her tea, along with George going and getting her a bunch of things. When George's mother or father was home, Grandma never ordered George about like this. It was only when she had him on her own that she began treating him badly. You know, what's the matter with you? The old lady said, staring at George over the rim of the teacup with those bright, wicked little eyes. You're growing too fast. Boys who grow too fast become stupid and lazy. But I can't help it if I'm growing fast, Grandma, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing is a nasty, childish habit. But we have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown-ups. Rubbish, boy, rubbish. Rubbish is like a word for garbage or trash. She means it kind of like nonsense. She said, look at me. Am I growing? Certainly not. But you once did, Grandma. Only very little, the old woman answered. I gave up on growing when I was extremely small, along with the other nasty childish habits like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. You haven't given up on any of these things, have you? I'm still only a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snorted. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing, soon it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. George took a look, good look at Grandma. She certainly was a very tiny person. Her legs were so short she had to have a footstool to put her feet on and her head only came halfway up the back of the armchair. Daddy says it's fine for a man to be tall, George said. And here's that description of Grandma looking small in her chair. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Listen to me. But how do I stop myself from growing, George asked. Eat less chocolate, Grandma says. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way, she snapped. Up instead of down. Grandma sipped some tea, but never took her eyes from the little boy who stood before her. Never grow up, she said, always down. Yes, Grandma. And stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. Cabbage? Oh no, I don't like cabbage, George said. It's not what you like or what you don't like, Grandma snapped. It's what's good for you that counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day. Mountains of cabbage. And if you got caterpillars in it, it's much better. Ouch, George said. Caterpillars give you brains, the old woman said. Mummy washes them down the sink, George said. Mummy's as stupid as you are, Grandma said. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few boiled caterpillars in it. Slugs, too. Not slugs, George cried out. I couldn't eat slugs. Whenever I see a living slug on a piece of lettuce, Grandma says, I gobble it up real quick before it crawls away. Delicious. She squeezed her lips together so tight that her mouth became a tiny wrinkled hole. Delicious, she said again. Worms and slugs and beetly bugs. You don't know what's good for you. And you can see right there, George dreaming about her slugs.
that she's talking about. Hmm. I'm kind of wondering whether Grandma really means it or if she's really trying to keep all that chocolate to herself. We'll have to see if she really eats slugs. You're joking, Grandma. I never joke, she said. Beetles are perhaps the best of all. They go crunch. Grandma, that's beastly. The old hag grinned, showing those pale brown teeth. Sometimes, if you're lucky, she said, you get a beetle inside the stem of a celery stick. That's what I like. Grandma, how could you? You find all sorts of nice things in sticks of raw celery, the old woman went on. Sometimes it's an earwig. I don't want to hear about it, cried George. A big, fat earwig that's very tasty, Grandma said, licking her lips. But it, you've got to be very quick, my dear. When you put one of those in your mouth, it has a pair of sharp nippers on, on its back end, and it grabs your tongue with those. It'll never let go. So you've got to bite the earwig first, chop, chop, before it bites you. George started edging towards the door. He wanted to get far away as possible from this filthy old woman. You're trying to get away from me, aren't you? She said, pointing her finger straight at George's face. You're trying to get away from your grandma. Jo little George stood by the door, staring at the old hag in the chair. She stared back at him. Could it be, George wondered, that she was a witch? He had always thought witches were only in fairy tales, but now he was not so sure. Come closer, little boy, she said, beckoning him to her with a finger. Come closer to me and I will tell you secrets. George didn't move. Grandma didn't move either. I know a great many secrets, she said. Suddenly, she smiled. It was a thin, icy smile, the kind a snake might make just before it bites you. Hmm, that was a little bit of personification. Snakes don't smile. Come over here, Grandma, to Grandma, and she'll whisper secrets to you. George took a step backwards, edging closer to the door. You mustn't be frightened of your old grandma, she said, smiling that icy smile. George took another step back. Some of us, she said, and all at once she was leaning forward in her chair and whispering in a throaty sort of voice George had never heard her use before. Some of us, she said have magic powers that can twist creatures of the earth into wondrous shapes. A tingle of electricity flashed down the length of George's spine. He began to feel frightened. Some of us, the old woman went on, have fire on our tongues and sparks in our bellies and wizardry in our, the tips of our fingers. Here's a picture of Grandma leaning right towards George and him leaning right away. Some of us know secrets that would make your hair stand straight up on end and your eyes pop out of your sockets. Hmm, I wonder if grandma's really magic or if she's just trying to scare him. She's kind of scaring me. George wanted to run away, but his feet seemed stuck to the floor. We know how to make your nails drop off and teeth grow out of your fingers instead. Yeah, what a gross picture. George began to tremble. It was her face that frightened him most of all, that frosty smile, the brilliant, unblinking eyes. We know how to have you wake up in the morning with a long tail coming out from your behind. Grandma, he cried out, stop. We know secrets, my dear, about the dark places where things live and squirm and slither all over each other. 
George made a dive for the door. It doesn't matter how far you run, he heard her say. You will never get away. George ran into the kitchen, slamming the door behind him. Yeah, I think I'd run away from her, too. Don't worry, this story gets less scary, though. Chapter 2 The Marvelous Plan George sat himself down at the table in the kitchen. He was shaking a little. Oh, how he hated Grandma! He really hated that horrid old witchy woman! And all of a sudden, he had a tremendous urge to do something about her. Something whooping. Something absolutely terrific. A real shocker. A sort of explosion. He wanted to blow away the witchy smell that hung about her in the next room. He may have been only eight years old, but he was a brave little boy. He was ready to take this old woman on. I'm not going to be frightened by her, he said softly to himself. But he was afraid. And that's why he wanted to suddenly explode her away. Well, not quite away, but he did want to shake the old woman up a bit. Very well, then. What should it be, this whooping, terrific, exploding shocker for Grandma? He would have liked to put a firecracker under her chair, but he didn't have one. He would have liked to put a long green snake down the back of her dress, but he didn't have a long green snake. He would have liked to put six big black rats in the room with her and lock the door, but he didn't have six black, big black rats. rats. As George sat there pondering this inter interesting problem, his eyes fell upon a bottle of Grandma's brown medicine standing on the sideboard. So here is George's imagination of all the things that he wanted to do to Grandma. The explosion, the rats, the snake, the firecracker. Rotten stuff in it seemed to be. Four times a day, a large spoonful of it was shoved into her mouth. And it didn't do her the slightest bit of good. She was always just as horrid after she had it as she'd been before. The whole point of medicine surely was to make a person better. If it didn't do that, then it was quite useless. So, George thought suddenly, aha, oh bum, I know exactly what I'll do. I shall make her a new medicine. One that is so strong and so fierce and so fantastic, it will either cure her completely or blow off the top of her head. I'll make her a magic medicine, a medicine no doctor in the world has ever made before. George looked at the kitchen clock. It said five past ten. There was nearly an hour left before Grandma's next dose was due at eleven. Here we go, then cried George, jumping up from the table. A magic medicine it shall be. So here's George coming up with his new idea in the kitchen. So give me a bug and a jumping flea. So give me a snail or lizard three. And a slimy squiggler from the sea. And the poisonous sting of a bumblebee. And the juice from a fruit on a juby, jujube tree and the powdered bone of a wombat's knee, and one hundred of other things as well, each with a rather nasty smell. I'll stir them up, I'll boil them long, a mixture through a mixture strong, and then, hi-ho, down it goes, a nice big spoonful, hold your nose. Just a gulp, just gulp it down and have no fear, how do you like it, Granny dear? Will she go pop? Will she explode? Will she go flying down the road? Will she go poof in a puff of smoke? Start fizzing like a can of Coke? Who knows, not I. Let's wait and see. I'm glad it's neither you nor me.
Oh, Grandma, if you only knew what I have got in store for you. So we're going to end there for today. I would like you to answer the questions in the link below and make a guess of what you think might actually go in George's medicine. What sort of ingredients do you think he's going to put in there to make it magic?